All right, this is the Battle D20 Dungeons and Dragons 4th Edition Dungeon Master tutorial. First, if you don't have the file on your list for Vassal, you'd click Open Mod, go find your mod. I probably put them in uh, C Games Apps Vassal, and there it would be. Uh, you might have downloaded it, and from there you can put it wherever you want. You just gotta find it, though, from Vassal and load it. Since I've already got it, I'll double click and let's hop into the game. Since this is the Dungeon Master Guide, we will go into an offline game to prepare a game to be played online. So first we'll click Start New Game Offline, hit Next down here, and we'll select the uh, DM as our player. It'll load up into a large full-size screen, which we'll uh, fix here. There we go. And uh, we'll go over some of the basics first. What you'll want to do is um, well, start building a map. You've got a whole bunch of maps to choose from. Some are uh, pre-generated, some are just basic uh, terrain pieces. Here's a little uh, pre-made one. So I'm going to take this one. It's one of my favorites. It is the uh, lava terrain. And we'll put all these elements back where they go. I'm just going to center it with the top left corner of the screen right there. And um, if you had a pre-made map, you'd want to center it with the top left corner just because uh, the grids will line up. But uh, so once we've got that in place, there's a few options you can see through the right-click menu. There's a lock, invisible, rotate, and clone. Clone, we don't need to really worry about these. Rotate, we'll uh, rotate it, and it'll take a minute because it's a big image that it's going to rotate. We don't really want to rotate that, it's just going to be ugly. Instead, what we can do is uh, we can turn it invisible, which we can still see it faintly, but the players would not be able to see this ground at all. And then you can just change it mid-game or whatever. One of the best options is this uh, lock tool, though. When you lock it, uh, this will come up, you just hit cancel. The um, lava field, though, is now locked very helpful because when you start to place your uh, hero pieces, which you got here in Heroes and D&D &D are the two main. Also, hero portraits would be some good uh, heroes and NPCs alike. Then you've got lots of uh, monsters and things. This is uh, called a Wolf Rider. It's from uh, PG Maker. I actually took a lot of these monsters. They were in PG, PNG format. So I just took them straight out of RPG Maker and put them in here. I like to use these little guys as kobolds since you can't really tell what the heck they are anyway. And uh, then there's uh, beasts and dragons and all kinds of good stuff. It was uh, important to lock your map because once you get to here, you can start trying to click on your figures. And if you miss, you'll click the map and drag the map and completely ruin everything. And it'll be very annoying. So you always want to lock your map. And then you just got to make sure you precisely click on the figure you want to move. Uh, with the figures, there are some uh, good options. We'll go ahead and show those since we uh, went ahead and clicked on them. Uh, you can do them with all the figures, including the heroes, which are a little distinctive because they have the white backgrounds to help them to stand out a little bit more. Then you've got your monsters. One of the biggest things is you also have the ability to um, turn them invisible so your players can't see them at all. And then once they turn the corner into a room, you just right-click invisible and say, okay, here. Um, another fun option is this, um, along with the map options we had of turning on their side, cloning, and turning invisible, is this properties one. The best option about that is, say you didn't have all of these, use some control keys to get rid of them. Uh, you can clone these guys, and when you make your clone and move it, now I have two, and their uh, information for the monster kept. So, it's really helpful for that. First, let's uh, get a little more into our map here. We saw the full maps. Now there's also uh, map rooms, floors, walls, and some uh, random doodads here. Let's go ahead and grab a very basic room. Throw that in there, and you'll notice that the uh, map stays on top of the full maps, but underneath the figures, they are all segregated into uh, to layers. And so, uh, we've got a basic room. We're going to go ahead and lock the room in place. And uh, I'm just going to show you some of the tiles as well. We'll sort of build a basic map right now. We just made uh, a room and some other things. Let's uh, pull a couple of these out. And uh, rotate them right there, right there. Let's see, I'll lock all these into place. 
And so I've got some basic stuff there. And uh, that's so that's for the the tiles. You can also they're uh, they're all locked now. Everything's locked. I like to lock all my map pieces so I don't accidentally click on. Or if I'm trying to grab this dragon here, I don't actually grab the room and drag the room instead. So um, let's show you what the walls do. The walls are very helpful. We've got uh, some stone and some just plain black walls here. Um, these little squares you can use for multi-purpose. They uh, you can have some blast radius here. It's like a six by six blast radius. You got a four, a three, a two, until like size, and a one. So you got uh, size one, two, three. You got a 4 and a 6, so I'm going to make a 5, because the blast radius 5 is pretty common in the game as well. But uh, really those are meant to be used for like little rooms that you just throw right into the game, because they're pre-made walls. So uh, we're going to grab some of these walls though. This little black one, we'll put it right there. And you'll notice that they stay on top of the floors, which is helpful and exactly what we want for this. We'll rotate them, put them where we want them, so that dragon's blocked in. We can clone it and uh, turn that and uh, block this room off as well. And you can, uh, these you want to lock just like you did, we did the others. You can turn this guy invisible. So there, uh, with these options you can build uh, kind of any map you want. you got the backgrounds change up here, which your background as you saw could be all tile. That was uh, right down here. You can be all solid tile and then build your walls from that. And then I've got these uh, colored backgrounds as well as completely pre-made maps that uh, we can deal with. So uh, that's the basics. You can build just about anything with your walls and all that set up and um, move them wherever you want, add rooms. You can, uh, instead of having these things come off, you can have uh, walls like this come off your main room. And uh, I'm just actually clone that one. So just lock everything when you finish. Okay, so now you have some basic room pieces going on. Uh, it's kind of fun. I tried to be as intuitive as I could while making this uh, this map generation. And then uh, when you hop into your game, you have these guys all preset to however you're going to have them. And your characters come in, they open this door, and you just be like, turn you invisible, invisible, and roll some initiative. And then you'd start a battle. Got your d20s and dice up here, of course. Got a 20 and a 6 set. And then uh, in here, you can type in whatever you want, like 2d6, and then add 3 to the total right there. And that would make 11. So with your dice and all that, you're uh, good to go for a lot of basics. To um, help your players out and help yourself out, especially in this tutorial, we'll talk about we talked about figures. Now let me show you the um, some of the tabs and monsters we gave you. Monsters one uh, we don't use as much anymore. I'm gonna have to rehaul overhaul that. Monsters two, however, is about a hundred monsters taken directly out of the monster manual. To um, select the card you want, you just right click, say draw a specific card, and then you can look straight through. I'm gonna try to make these a little more descriptive, also because I know these kobolds are. There are uh, three different kobolds. I know this one. The first one is actually a kobold minion. I'll pull that out and put it right there for now. What I'd like to do is, uh, as DM, I'll have the cards in my hand and zoom in so I can actually read them. And then I'll even have, like to have a couple kobolds in my hand. And I just right clicked and said mask. That'll make it so that when you click off of it, it doesn't show you the back, which the back has the picture and the tactics. If we mask it, then it'll just always show you the card, which is the more important info. And you got your little dudes in here, so you can have a whole bunch of them in your hand. Just keep cloning them. That way, uh, if you don't want to have them on the map already set up and invisible, you can have a whole bunch in your hand ready to go. And uh, whenever they enter a room or something, you're like, all right, these guys appear, here you go. And then you've got the card in your hand that you can play off of if you don't like the do the right click properties and keep track of the hit points that way. Kind of depends on uh, your style. I found uh, both ways are helpful. If you do the uh, right click properties method and have the character sheet kind of thing for them, then you can keep track of their hit points and stuff directly on their character. But sometimes that can seem a little more tedious. Other times I like to just have a little pen and paper while I'm DMing and uh, just write down a little check for each one, have their hit points, and then I can very quickly just write that down. And so sometimes I add a little bit of a paper element to this online game as a DM. 
Um, that's pretty much all you'll need is your uh, characters. You can put your NPC characters in your hand as well and have them ready to go. And uh, so once you have those in your hand, you have your map set up and uh, some things laid out, you'll be pretty much ready to start a basic game. And uh, we'll show you how to do that in just a second. Some other information is uh, this uh, tables, this, this tab, the last one we got. It's got some uh, very helpful stuff. On the right here are some pre-made characters that you can give to your characters, uh, your players. Uh, they're all at level 1, but there's a nice little handful to choose from right here. And I just did right click, draw specific, you find the one you want, say wizard dwarf, okay, and it should pop up to the top. And then you give that to them in their hand. You can see all your players' hands too. Your, your player uh, one hand is called their space, and uh, they can only see their own space, they can't see everyone else's. And that's for them to like either put their cards, or to put their um, their powers and abilities, as well as their uh, class cards, so they can make sure they can keep track of all their information without needing extra stuff. The only extra thing your player should need is a, uh, a character sheet, possibly. And then here's some of the good uh, information for the DM, as well as players. There's a feats list and advancement for leveling up, as well as uh, some actions. They'll give your players some basic descriptions of uh, common actions that they can take during their turn, in case you got uh, some noobs as well as uh, conditions, status conditions, and um, skills, advancements right here. It's a very good one to have for leveling up. You can see on there it's kind of small right now, but uh tells you the experience level, the level you'd be at when you get reach that, the points you get, uh, what you get at that level. So it's like gain one daily attack power or gain one utility plus gain one feat. And then it's, uh, it's straight out of the uh, the player's handbook. So that's your basic information. Uh, right here is your uh, zoom in, zoom out. I like to tell my players to zoom in to like 60 or 80 percent. That way they're uh, nice and zoomed in on where we're at and they can't really see the whole map. They can always look at the map just by zooming back out. But if you're zoomed in real good, they can see the monsters better and they can only see what they normally would be able to see as opposed to uh, making their screen huge and just being able to see everything. Get this IRC chat so you can talk to each other, or um, I prefer to use Skype. Right now, what you do is then when you close, you'd want to save the game um, in whatever state it is, and then when you hop into the game, you'll just load that game up. Right now, I just click to cancel, and so we'll load it back in and show what it looks like to be a DM for real. Then you'll go online. After you've set up your game offline, you'll go online, and it'll give you this. I'm always having to move these menus for my video here. You'll get this. When you or your players first come in, you'll be in the main room, and you need to create a room so that you can make a game. So I'll create. There's no one in there anymore. Just me. When your players enter the game, you'll tell them just to right-click on your name and hit this synchronize option right here but not before you have made a room and then hit load game. If you don't have a game already pre-made, you can just do uh, um, a new game and set it up straight on here while your players wait for you to get going. I had a game ready, but instead we'll just hit new game real quick to show a couple of the options online. So once you get online, you'll have your maps and your figures and everything set up. You'll have this so you'll be able to uh, talk to people and uh, click on their name and do stuff like kick them out of your game or invite people to your game. And so, uh, that's some of those options. Also, uh, things get going. They, uh, your players will just join. Make sure that when you join, you join the game as the DM. And then when everyone else joins, they'll join as one of these players, two through six. And, uh, you'll be able to just really start going. And, uh, you can tell them to get the race cards from here. I'll show you just a touch. Got ten races to choose from and uh, they just grab these cards and put them right into their hand and on the back is their information for like their uh, abilities they would get from being that race. So that is the basics of playing. Once you get on here you'll uh, have all your guys, move them around, you can tell your people what to be doing here in the chat and uh, uh, right now it's uh, pretty playable and we'll be working out the glitches as we go. So that's it for this tutorial and uh, keep an eye out for other ones.